Welcome along, fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around, we are going to check out some of my favorite photos of Tittenhurst Park, long after it was owned by John Lennon and Ringo Starr. You're going to see some cool snaps, some of which you may have never seen before. Before I begin, please like and share this episode and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. Imagine if John Lennon had not permanently left the United Kingdom and remained at Tittenhurst Park. He still could have lived and traveled all over the world while keeping this incredible estate for him and for his son Julian to someday inherit and for his family and friends to be able to enjoy during his lifetime and beyond. But for reasons we will never know, he didn't. Instead, he moved to New York and he never returned. And two years later, he sold it to Ringo Starr, who owned it for over a dozen years before deciding to sell it in the late 1980s. In 1989, Tittenhurst Park was purchased for £5 million by the President of the United Arab Emirates, who invested heavily in restoring the buildings and gardens. He planned to stay there for at least a week of every year. He was in his early 70s at the time and was estimated to be worth over $20 billion. Among the many reasons he purchased the estate was his interest in cultivating the rhododendrons in the historic gardens. Over 200 workmen spent more than five years renovating the estate. The entire house was gutted and every room was rebuilt. The white room, for example, was painted in a mauve tone and massive chandeliers were hung from the ceiling. This image shows the perimeter of the estate. Now check this out. I have it on good authority that when Ringo sold the estate, he kept some of the land to himself. And if that is the case, I believe it is this area right here. From above, this is what the estate looks like today. I am going to show some close-up images in this show, but for now I mostly want to just give you an idea of how the estate has changed over time and what it is like today. Now this is still the main entry to Tinhurst Park. There's a large wrought iron security gate off a of London Road that guards the entry. And to the side there's another entry exclusively for staff. And there's another entry by the former Keeper's Lodge. And there's yet another entry for a staff on the far end of the property. In fact, this area gives an idea of just how much land John Lennon once owned. Remember, it was about 72 acres when he owned it. And as you can see, this area is now filled with a complex of buildings for staff. I mean, honestly, if he cared, John Lennon could have built homes there for his entire family to live in, including his son and his ex-wife. Yeah, I know, sometimes you don't want to be too close to your ex, but come on. We're talking about 72 acres. But John Lennon could have taken care of all of his friends and family if he would have just held on to Tinhurst Park. The former stables and garage were enlarged and now include several guest houses, in fact, it seems as if they were combined with the former Forge Cottages. And of course you've seen those before because the Beatles took photos in front of them. The wing of the mansion, where John Lennon built his recording studio, was torn down and it was replaced with a larger two-story structure. The Cape Dutch Cottage was substantially expanded in order to create living spaces for guests beneath it. The pool was redesigned, it was certainly enlarged, and it was covered with a steel dome bullet and mortar proof cover. And so yeah, if you had any plans of flying over Tittenhurst Park and dropping any bombs on the swimming pool, forget about it because it's not going to make any difference at all. Whoever's in there is just going to keep on swimming. By the way, don't do that. I really love this. A marble paved tunnel was built to connect the pool to the house. And check out that glass roof. Isn't that wild? And you can see that rooms were built within the descending slope. The historic gardens were restored and new gardens were created, including a circular arboretum and man-made streams. Also, a stream valley was formed to lead down to the lake. And paved footpaths were created all around the property. As you can see, the statue of Diana and surrounding fountain are still there. Now this is pretty cool. The man-made lake 
that John Lennon had built was more than doubled in size and a teardrop-shaped addition was added to the north. And there's a waterfall connecting the lakes. This is another example of what could have been done with this estate had John Lennon kept it. Check this out. A Grecian-style summer house was built along the south side of the lake. Now, prior to this one, there was another summer house there, but it was torn down to make this larger one. Remember in the Imagine film when John Lennon and Yoko Ono were playing chess in that small structure? Well, it was right there, in that small man-made island in the middle of the lake. And as you can see, a couple of water fountains were added. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Before I continue, can you please do me a favor and like and share the show? And kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And please share your thoughts in the comments below. Now, I don't claim to be a mind reader, but I think I know what you're thinking right about now. What is Tittenhurst Park worth today? Well, I think it's fair to assume that its value was in the high tens of millions of dollars. So for all those stories about what a financial genius Yoko Ono was, you would have thought that she and John would have consulted their psychics or accountants or anybody with half a brain, any of whom would have told them, do not sell this property, ever. Do not sell this. My God, you paid 145,000 pounds for it. Do not sell it. But they did. And it's too bad. Because maybe if John Lennon would have kept it, he wouldn't have been shut down in the street like a rabid dog. But hey, John Lennon could have died in any of a million different ways between then and now. But I think we can all agree he should have kept Tittenhurst Park. But at least it was finally owned by someone who was willing to invest the time and the effort and energy and had the interest to restore and beautify Tittenhurst Park because neither John Lennon nor Ringo Starr ever did. And I don't know why. Because the estate is incredible. I mean, this isn't just a mansion with a bunch of land. Tinhurst Park is really something special. And John Lennon owned it. And Ringo Starr owned it. And they both sold it for practically pennies. It's incredible to even think about. I mean, we've all made bad financial decisions in our life, haven't we? But I mean, come on, guys. Nobody could have said anything to them. Nobody could have told John Lennon Ringo Starr, do not sell it. Nobody? There wasn't anybody? I don't get it. Anyway, as you may know, I've written several books about the architecture and history of Tittner's Park. So if you want more detailed information on the estate and a lot of really cool images, including floor plans, please check out my books. As you know, I have a large private collection of images associated with Tittenhurst Park, so if you're interested, I could produce more shows so you can see them. So, what do you think of Tittenhurst Park? If you were rolling in dough, would you live in a place like that? And if so, would you prefer the estate as it was when John Lennon lived there, or today? Please let me know in the comments below. By the way, I don't know who took some of the photos that I have shown in this show, so if you do, please let me know so I can respectfully give them the credit they deserve. At this point, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this time travel adventure to check out some of my favorite photos of historic rock and pop star mansions. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because there will be more videos like this one, and I hope you'll check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel, and or join me on Patreon. You can also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Please be kind to all non-human animals and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, all of the beetles chose a plant-based diet. Also, please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog or both. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.